So let's talk about the staff page of a website. Uh, do you really need one for your church? What does it do for you? Like, why is it a good idea? Why is it something that you should consider on your, your new church website or your current church website if you don't already have a staff bio page? And also, what, what should it look like? Uh, we're also going to get into the pastor bio. Like, what does that need to look like? What does that need to sound like? We have a great outline to help you with that. So let's get into it as we get into this episode of the Church Brain Guide podcast. Um, let's talk talk about this page on your website. So first of all, we do recommend having a staff page on your website. Most people that are checking out your church for the first time go to your website. And on that website, they want to know who the leaders are. Uh, in fact, they want to know who the founder is or who the, the person that is leading the church right now. Who is that person? They want to get to know them. And it's a great idea to have that information available on the website. It's good uh, marketing tactics uh, to allow people to find out what that is. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is bring on the walls so they come for a visit. Uh, a great church website is primarily focused on getting new guests to come to your church on, on a weekend. That's a great job. If you had to give a job description to your website, that's a, that's a great job description. How do you get, how does your website get a person that is a stranger to come to the church on a weekend for their first experience. Uh, one of the ways we do that is by having a great staff page. Now a staff page does not have to have like actual paid staff. It could be key leaders within the church, depends how big your church is. Uh, that, that depends how many people would be on that page. You could include some volunteers that are in key leadership positions. Uh, so things like uh, like kids ministry, people care about that. They care about who's in charge of their kids, uh, teenagers, teenage ministry, men's ministry, uh, women's ministry, those type of things. So if you do have a lay person that's a volunteer, to, but they are in charge of those areas, you, you could include them on this page and uh, it would be a great way to um, engage with people. Let them know what you value as a church. So one of the great uh, things that a staff page does is it also allows people to contact people, uh, contact leadership and get their, an their questions answered. So if you, uh, if you have your uh, email contact information on that page, then that's a great way for people to reach out to somebody that might be in charge of a specific area that they're interested in. And uh, that great communication is a key towards uh, just inviting, being, being inviting towards people. So if your church brand is a brand that is inviting to people that are on the outside that, you know, basically don't come to the church yet, then this is one of the ways that you can bring down the walls to allow people to contact and get information, get their questions answered by providing this. Uh, we do recommend that you hide the email domain uh, behind an icon. So uh, on, on our pages that we design, we have an icon and then the email goes into that icon. It's clickable and it pulls up like their email uh, program. Uh, it's, it's set to do that so that it, they can set up that email and, and, and send it out. But if your email is visible online, then that's where that person uh, gets a lot of spam. And we want to avoid that by not showcasing the actual email address um, on the website. So just a nice little tip for you as you're looking at that. So a uh, couple things to, to also point out is that uh, you don't have to have a bio on every person. Now, it is kind of nice. Uh, it does... The goal is to help people to know you, like you, and trust you as a as a church and as a church leader, as church leadership. So if um if you can do bios for everybody on the website, then that's a that's a good idea. But it's kind of hard to do that, especially if you get you know ten, twelve, you know twenty people on the on the website. That's kind of hard to do. But um, if you can, that'd be great. Now with the pastor, we do recommend having the pastor bio on the website. What we like to do is put it on the about page. Um, people are learning about the church and they go to the about page to learn about the different pieces uh, or parts of the church, what makes up the church. And one of those things is the pastor, the leader. Um, the leader is very important. Um, they are the face of the brand, so to speak. So the person that presents every single weekend on, on stage or most weekends, they become uh, kind of the, the face that is connected with the brand. So a great bio is great uh, to, to, to have in place. And there's, a, uh, there's a, definitely a right way and a wrong way to do this, uh, this bio. In fact, we have a blog article that we posted on the churchbrandguide.com website that just talks about what is it that uh, a great pastor bio needs to have. 
well, first it needs to have a great introduction and um, provide some personality to it so people can basically get to know the pastor, like the pastor, and then and then trust that person uh, to be able to take some next steps, like coming for their first visit. Uh, it should provide a uh, contact if possible. Sometimes, you know, that's not possible, but if, if it is, then that's great. Um, it should highlight the uh, some uh, education and training that the pastor has. So uh, basically, it needs to have empathy and authority. Um, uh, just a little bit of authority goes a long way, not too much. Uh, the mistake that a lot of churches make is that they they kind of lean more into the authority part. Like this is the, these are the the uh, degrees that this pastor has, maybe books and different things that they have written, and and that's good. Like we should mention those things, but don't go too heavy on it. It's kind of like salt. A little bit is good. But too much uh, kind of ruins the meal. Uh, so uh, a little bit of authority uh, is good. So people understand that they can trust this person. Um, but empathy is great. Like what is what are some values and beliefs that this uh, you know leader has? What are some convictions that the leader has? Uh, maybe highlight some community involvement or some things that they've done that are, that's just more community focused. Uh, include any testimonials or quotes from uh, colleagues or members or even mentors uh, about the person. And uh, share hobbies and interests. Again, that makes it more likable. The person becomes more likable. Uh, if, the, if the pastor likes to play pickleball, you know, it doesn't have anything related to the uh, the church leadership, but it is something that makes them more likable. Um, and then include a call to action, something, a next step that you want people to take. Yes, this is a bio, but a call to action to come for a visit uh, this weekend, something along those lines. Uh, I would love to meet you or pastor, you know, pastor would love to meet you. Something along those lines uh, would be a nice touch to, um, to make sure that there's a call to action in that bio. Uh, also proofread it, make sure it's all good. You know, like anything else that you put online and publish, you just want to make sure we're good. Uh, Grammarly is a great tool that we found to help that, uh, process go smoothly and, uh, quickly. So, uh, once again, just talking about a pastor bio, we like to put that onto the about page. The about page is the second most visited page on a church website behind the homepage. So people are checking out the about page to then decide if they're going to come for a visit. Having a pastor bio on that page with a great picture is a good idea. Um, the picture, if it has the um, family included, like the pastor and his wife and kids, that would be ideal. It uh, gives, again, more, more insights into the leader of the church, which causes people to um, answer some questions that they might have coming in. Uh, and then from there, you can link out, you could either have a separate page for the, the rest of the leadership, or maybe there's a button on the same about page that, that goes to the leadership page. If there's not a lot of leaders in, in the church that where you need a page, I would say at least um, more than three leaders uh, would require a page or could re require a, a page. If there's three leaders or less, then maybe just put them all on the about page and have a nice photo of them and uh, put their their uh, their name and title on there or their, their role at the church on there with the email to where somebody can contact. If they have a phone number, put the phone number on there as well if that is something that you want to provide uh, for people to be able to reach out. Now with the photo, a couple tips on that. Find a location uh, probably in the church, uh, a location that's easily replicatable. So everybody can kind of go to the same spot, take the photo. You, you're creating a system out of it. Uh, use an iPhone with a portrait mode or one of the smartphones with a portrait mode. Uh, you can use a, an, a DSLR. That, that'd be awesome. Uh, most churches, you know, it's kind of hard to set that up uh, every time. If you can, that's awesome. Using a portrait lens, that, that's ideal. But really the, um, the iPhone with a portrait mode setting uh, chosen on that um iPhone uh, or smartphone of any, you know, that provides that setting. It's going to get you the best results. Uh, have good lighting. Stand in front of a window if you can or set up a light if you can so the light, the faces don't have shadows on them. So in um, in Cornerstone, we, we took pictures in a lobby with a huge window that's uh, right next to the, the person taking the picture. And we're typically taking it during the day when it's nice and bright. Um, it's diffused light, so it's not harsh shadows. Uh, so it's kind of bouncing off the walls there. 
and it works uh, uh, for creating nice even lighting across the face. Uh, if you're a professional photographer, there's some more tricks that you can kind of get into. But for most people, I just want to let you know, like um, lighting is very important. Let's just get a good, well-lit area. And uh, another thing to pay attention to is the background. So having some depth in the background. So, so basically not right up against the wall. Uh, we want to add some depth where it goes back into a lobby area or maybe back further, maybe, maybe 20 feet or so behind the person so that there's a, a nice depth behind the person. And then that, that portrait mode setting on your, uh, your phone is gonna blur the background and keep the, the face nice and sharp. And that creates a really nice look. Uh, warm lighting, uh, kind of a yellow tint to it is, is, is nice. So if you're doing sunlight, that's gonna naturally give you that warm lighting. Uh, you wanna avoid blue light, uh, makes, the, makes the, the, the picture not so warm. So that's a little bit of uh, some tips there on the photo itself. Uh, create a consistent space where you can uh, take those photos uh, when you need to. There's going to be a lot of retakes and um, it's hard to get it right. So uh, just make sure you have a good consistent space to do that. Uh, when Whenever you get new people coming in, it, you know, you just go to the same spot. It makes it nice and easy. Okay, so this is, um, this is a great example of a, a, a staff or a leadership page. Um, we also talked about the pastor bio, you know, where to put that, what does that need to look like? There is an outline. We have a blog article on churchbrainguide.com with an outline of uh, some great ideas of what you can put into that bio to make uh, the pastor uh, likable and also make him uh, just uh, trustworthy. So uh, we, we want to make sure that that comes across in, in the bio. All right, uh, hopefully this is gonna be helpful to you as you take a look at your church website. If you need help with your church website, we would love to do that, Church Brain Guide. We build websites, we build brands. Uh, website's a big part of that. Uh, so reach out to us, uh, book a demo, you can kind of see our process. Uh, go to churchbrainguide.com and just uh, click the button there to book a time. Uh, we'll get on a call with you and answer any questions you have, show you what our, our process looks like and what maybe some of our websites look like as well. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe on this video. We want to produce some things to help you go further faster as you look to reach more people in your community. Uh, that way you can do the most good uh, you know, that, that you could possibly do as a, as a church. Thanks for joining me. My name is Michael with Church Brand Guide, and we'll see you next time.